Okay, so a lot of people know the story of Nero, Emperor of Rome. Crazy, crazy man. But there's part of the story I find really interesting that I didn't know about until now. Basically, Nero's mother was Agrippina the Younger. Agrippina? Agrippina? Let's go with Agrippina. Basically, Agrippina was pretty screwed up herself. She married her uncle, Claudius, who became Emperor of Rome. Claudius had a son, Britannicus. So she had Claudius adopt Nero and make Nero heir to the throne. So now she's married to Claudius and her son's heir to the throne. So what do you do? You kill Claudius. As the legend goes, she hired an assassin named Locusta or Locusta. Let's say Locusta, like locusts. Locusta is credited in some circles as being the world's first recorded serial killer, a woman in ancient Roman times. Locusta got her reputation by poisoning people. So it would follow that they would poison Claudius and that's pretty much what they did. So Claudius is now dead. And her son is heir to the throne. See, you still have this other guy, Britannicus, the legitimate son of her uncle, Claudius. So just to make sure that he's out of the way, Nero has Locusta kill Britannicus. So Claudius is dead. Britannicus didn't make it past the first year of Nero's reign. And because of Grabina, Nero is now Emperor of Rome, which is pretty much one of the worst things to ever happen in history. I'm not going to get into all the really fucked up shit that Nero did during his reign, but let's just say things got a little weird. Now, Grabina thinks that she's going to wield some power in Nero's reign. She makes herself regent, but as he comes of age, she realizes she can't control this little demon seed of human history. Eventually, Nero has his own mother killed too. Really nice guy this Nero. Meanwhile, Locusta has been living a life of luxury. She's still like poisoning people left and right, killing people for the fun of it. But Nero pardons her for all of the deaths that she's being charged for. He gives her land, he gives her money. Really, I don't know why he didn't marry the bitch. Nero, to his credit, you can never say Nero does not remember his friends. Unless his friend was his mother who killed her own uncle to make sure that he secured his throne. All right, but we can forget about that. She was probably a bitch. Eventually, the Roman Senate decided they had enough of Nero's act, so they kill him. They don't really technically get to kill him because supposedly he cut his own throat before they had the chance. He probably enjoyed that too. Now Nero's dead, which means Locust's 15 minutes are up. Now, we can never know for sure how the Roman Senate would have killed Nero. From what I've read, it sounds like they passed on what they would have done to Nero to Locusta. So how did they kill Locusta? They tied her up and they have her publicly raped by a giraffe. A fucking giraffe? I don't know. They've got to be big, right? After she is supposedly raped they bring in lions and tigers, and the wild animals rip her to shreds. And everybody claps. Yay! Crazy bitch is dead, yay! So you gotta give the Romans credit. In their age, they knew what to do with serial killers. And guys like Nero. So let this be a lesson to all you serial killers out there. You may have had a screwed up life. You may have had a really screwed up childhood that made you go crazy. But at least you can take comfort in the fact that you will not be raped by a giraffe and torn to shreds by a giant lion or tiger. So. so that's my story. I wanted to share it with you. I'm not sure why. I just had to get this out. I thought it was a really incredible story and uh, I'm gonna go to the movies now and get my mind off of this. Watch out for giraffes. Life's good.